One of the most powerful things happening in the world is artificial intelligence. And there are most of the people who think of artificial intelligence either think of it as science fiction or some kind of a utopia uh, that, you know, AI will solve all the problems. Uh, I have a different point of view and my book brings out a counter view uh, on how AI could actually cause serious problems. Uh, I know Deepak is himself invested in AI in some ways, but I want to discuss this with him to see where he's at, because on the one hand, uh, AI has, does offer all the great things, Deepak says so, uh, but on the other hand, I have some concerns which I'm bringing out in my book. So let's have this conversation with an open mind. We're, on, we're clearly in the same camp, primacy of consciousness. There is the other camp, and you mentioned some of the names, and I know these guys, I want to talk about them. Daniel Dennett completely uh, rejects the idea of consciousness, so not only primacy, but the existence of consciousness. I told Daniel Dennett, if you re reject consciousness, why should I speak to you? You're a robot. <laughs> there's, there's no point even having a conversation. There's no point having a conversation with a biological robot. Marvin Minsky. When I was a grad student, I was studying artificial intelligence. This is way back in the 70s. Marvin Minsky, huge figure, you know, his machine intelligence and all, all the stuff he was writing, you know, later on in the 70s, 80s. A huge figure, personality. And you've quoted him correctly saying that human beings are nothing but meat machines that carry a computer in the head. That's quite a tragedy. Lewandowski, a pioneer of driverless cars, AI visionary, he, he thinks of this digital world as a sort of a god. To him, it's the new god. And Harari also says that this is the new god. And he says it's not a god in the sense that it makes lightning or causes hurricanes. And this is a quote you have. But if there is something a billion times smarter than the smartest human, what else are you going to call it? So this idea that we surrender the ego not for a higher self, but we surrender an ego to become slaves of a digital system. That's kind of what it amounts to. We used to, Harari in fact says, once upon a time, we used to bow to these transcendent gods that gave us meaning. And now it's okay for us to give, we, we've done a mess, we messed up the whole thing. So rather than try to sort things out for ourselves, we should surrender our self food and our ego to this digital giant, uh, whether it's a Facebook or a Google or whoever it is, that is the new god. So I, in my book, I'm calling them Google Devta. There is a Google Devta. There is a Zuckerberg Devta. And the, the question is whether this kind of a, a battle will win one way or the other. But let me complete. You also mentioned Steven Pinker, another very intelligent person who feels that the ultimate is logic. And since logic can be turned into algorithms and machines and program, that is the inevitable you know, ultimate endpoint of uh, uh, human beings. So there are several others I've been studying because I've been looking at this kind of group and its effect on the world and their power and all that. Another one is Elon Musk. Now, Elon Musk first said that artificial intelligence is the biggest danger to the future of civilization, something to that effect. But then he says, I couldn't, I couldn't convince other people. So I decided if you can't fight and join them. So he started a venture called BMI, Brain Machine Interface. And what brain BMI is doing is to, uh, if you have a feeling, uh, an emotion, a fear, a joy, uh, the, the burst of uh, neurons, neuron activity, we can't decode it and turn it into some precise thing, but we can record it. So he is building plants which will record, record the burst of neurons. And once recorded, he can play it back and give you that experience. So his idea is, you can cure PTSD by giving people a happy experience. Uh, you can cure a bipolar by giving you uh, replacing your misery with something joyful. Uh, you can create you can create artificial emotions by doing so. So I wanted to talk to you about what you feel about this kind of uh, trajectory that the neuroscience neuroscientists are working with these people to figure out what's the brain machine interface that will allow somebody somewhere to push a button and say, okay, give Rajiv or give Deepak this kind of experience. And that's what we'll supposedly get. What do you think of that? All the people you mentioned are naive realists. 
So how do you define naive realism? Naive realism is a philosophy which says that the physical world exists exactly as perceived by the five human senses. Now, obviously, that's not true. There are species who experience the physical world differently. How does the world appear to an insect with a hundred eyes? How does the world appear to a bat that look, echo locates through ultrasound? How does the world appear to a snake that navigates through infrared radiation? So obviously the first tenet of naive realism is wrong. The world appears as it is experienced through a particular species specific nervous system. The world you see is experienced through a species called Homo sapiens through a human brain. And this is the world you're experiencing. It's not fundamental. It's a human experience. So that's naive right. realism. Naive realism also says the physical world would exist exactly as it is in the absence of conscious beings. Well, how do you know? We can only know the world through experience and consciousness. There are many other tenets of naive realism, subject object split, a physicalist ontology. And you can go on Wikipedia and look up all the different philosophies of naive realism. And they're all weak. Space time is dead. There's no such thing. Once space time is dead, all these theories are dead. All these theories are dead. However, what's his name? Elon Musk has a good point. You will be able through technology to influence somebody's mood. But you can do that even without technology. So what is this I'm holding? It's a symbol, right? It's a symbol. Krishna. Yes. It's a, yes. it's a story. It's a story, right? right. And yeah. when, if you, if you know the story and if you relate to the story, there are many stories here. Okay. Right. Looking at this, looking at this changes your neuronal activity, depending on the story right. you're looking at, imagining. So think of right. Krishna as, you know, with the gopis and there's mood. Think of Krishna on the battlefield with Arjuna, a different mood. That changes your neural activity. You read a book, that changes your neural activity. You listen to a song, it changes your neural activity. You interfere with the digital codes of neural act, uh, networks, it changes your experience. That doesn't mean anything. The, these are symbols. The brain is a symbol. The body is a symbol. And furthermore, it's a changing symbol. So I think of the body, this body, as an icon on the desktop of the cosmic computer. Okay, so this body is an icon called Deepak Chopra. You press the button and what opens is the world of Deepak Chopra. That's the PDF in the cosmic computer. But the PDF is also not the story. The PDF is one version of a cosmic story that is telling itself infinite stories. Okay, so these guys, they'll come up with good technologies. In fact, I have my own artificial intelligence uh, avatar. It's called Digital Deepak. And you can check it out. It's digitaldeepak.ai. And this guy is getting smarter by the day and soon will be much smarter than me. Because if he doesn't know the answer, you know, Rajiv calls Digital Deepak. Digital Deepak, what is the meaning of life? So if, depending on, it looks at you, says this guy is uh, spiritual, so I can't crack a joke. If the guest, this guy is not spiritual, let me crack a joke. And the joke is, what is the meaning of life? It's a sexually transmitted incurable condition. Okay. <laughs> now the digital Deepak looks at Raji and says, no, that's not a good joke for him. You know, he looks like a person who's into meditation, Vedanta, etc. Then he says, the meaning of life is that it is existence is a field of infinite possibilities that the source of existence is all modes of knowing, all knowers, all things known. It's AI, it's my replica, but it can't exist until I feed stuff into it. Now it can grow and become smarter. It can access libraries, but it doesn't mean it has consciousness. Okay, it doesn't mean yes. it has con because consciousness is not an algorithm. In fact, the algorithms are created in consciousness. So these guys are totally off the mark when it comes to reality. But they have certain good points 
when it comes to creating technology. So the digital Deepak is one kind of AI. Uh, and, and it's, as you said, it's subservient to, it's based on your creating it. What, what Elon Musk is doing is controlling me by pushing a button elsewhere. It's not under my own control. So people will be planted these things. Maybe uh, parents will be given an option when a baby is born. Do you want the Elon Musk chip? And the Elon Musk chip will give these, these benefits. The guy will get free Netflix. And he'll get all these benefits and he'll get discount at Amazon, whatever. So, it's you know, there'll so, be some people who say, huh? It's, it's so based on ignorance and avidya yes. that we don't even want to address it. It's beneath my dignity to even address it. Okay, what he's saying is possible. What he's saying is possible. It's also diabolical and it's also self-destructive and it will ultimately lead to a form of collective suicide. So let's say there's two possible futures. There is that future and then there's the future you and I would like, the primacy of consciousness. Question is, will the debate be decided by evidence and, logic and science uh, experience? That's one possibility. The second possibility is money and power because the five biggest digital uh, companies are now $6 trillion. And they're all into this. They are creating new uh, augmented reality goggles and implants and wearables and whatnot to give you experiences. I'm doing that too. I'm creating augmented reality, immersive dreamscapes, VR, artificial intelligence, deep learning, looking at the entangled bi microbiome. These technologies are amazing and they should be used and they will be used. The diabolical aspect of these technologies is always there. You know, with every technology, you have its other aspect. So do you feel that uh, when a person is on autopilot run by the technologies, uh, he is losing his agency? Do you feel that he's losing his agency the more he goes into you know, default mode and some technology whose buttons are pushed somewhere else is actually making choices for him? Yeah, that's absolutely true. This is the attempt to destroy free will because these guys don't even believe in free will. They think because it's a mechanistic universe and the laws of nature are inviolate, you don't have free will at all. So if you believe in a physicalist ontology, then you don't have free will. If you believe as consciousness is primary, then of course you have free will. So the question then remains, I mean, nobody can actually stop all this. It's going to happen. Whatever is going to happen is, is going to happen. Uh, but the individual free will sense of self being surrendered to instead of a higher authority to a system because they gratify me, they keep me happy, uh, they give me the experiences that they figured out what I like, they know all my data, my uh, they figured me out, they have a profile on me. And so Zuckerberg knows me better than maybe I know myself because I, there are maybe parts of me I don't come to terms with, but he knows a lot about me maybe better than my friends and my, my uh, relatives know me, he knows me better. So knowing a person better and knowing how to motivate, demotivate pleasures, pains uh, is already happening in the digital economy. And once there are implants, it's going to happen even more so. So the question is, at what, at, is, there a, is, is humanity slipping into a kind of surrender of the self, surrender of agency, surrender of free will and into a dystopia? Uh, is there a, is this a utopia or is this a dystopia? Because it could be either way. It's always been a dystopia. It's always. So, you know, this is only an exaggerated dystopia. The dystopia is because the human mind is conditioned by religion, by mythology, by politics, by economy, by history, the slavery, colonialism, on and on. The history of conditioning has already created a dystopian world. This will exaggerate, that's all. So it is the only the major humans will not be subject to it because they recognize that life is not an algorithm. And you know, the true creativity is not an algorithm. All these deep learning systems, and I'm very involved in deep learning systems, in AI, in VR, in augmented reality, because I think we can use them to create a better world, but they, are algorithms. They are not conscious beings. You and I are a conscious being. 
And once you recognize that, then you can use the technology to create a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier world. But if you want to be a biological robot like the rest, including all these people you mentioned, they look at the world as robotic because they think of themselves as biological robots. So let them go their way. And ultimately, that's not the solution to anything. It's, it's creating more schism, more subject object split, more power mongering, more cronyism, more corruption, more influence peddling. But I'm actually happy to see that that's crumbling right now. You see what's happening in Wall Street, the emergence of cryptocurrencies. Uh, I started out as a physicist and then I became a computer scientist. So I just want to discuss, I just want to discuss this with you. As a physicist, the philosophy of consciousness and quantum mechanics very uh, much together. It, it, it makes a lot of sense. The whole Heisenberg, Schrodinger, all of that stuff. Absolutely. So, so I, I'm into that. Uh, in fact, when I had my experience and quit my for-profit job, uh, I started a foundation and the first thing we funded was consciousness studies. Uh, but I, I then realized that the whole Tucson people and all those guys, they went into the material area, the, 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 the Dennett uh, kind of people, Minsky kind of people. So I stopped. I, I stopped. And now uh, I've returned in order to study what's happening in AI because I do have some concerns. And I, and, and I raised those concerns in my book uh, as to how, and I'm trying to figure out how to differentiate between the kind of AI that will bring prosperity and harmony and move humanity forward and the kind of AI that will actually create a bigger ego, a super ego to control other people. I'm happy to collaborate and anyway and give you feedback and I would love to do that. And and by the way, these guys, Daniel Derrett, Richard Dawkins, all these guys you talk, I don't think of them as scientists. I think of them as yeah. apostles of scientism. Scientism is a religion. Science is a methodology and we should be very clear about it. Wonderful. Those are wonderful words. And I want to thank you for your time, Deepak. This has been a pleasure. Uh, and we'll continue the conversation. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, Deepak.